Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. So I'm pretty sure many of you have heard that there is some controversy surrounding Cheryl Shirley Strawberry. Uh, she is the co-host of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. She's been in broadcasting for, I believe, about 40 years now. Um, the controversy actually is more surrounding her husband, who she's been married to for the past nine years. He's been brought up on a number of different charges, some of them uh, sexual. One of them is a con where he promised people that he would be their life coach, help them with their credit and social media. I want to just pause right there for a minute. Whenever someone is offering you so many different areas in which they can help you grow, that's actually a red flag. I know you may think, wow, I'm saving money and maybe even saving time by using someone who has all those skills, but it's actually a red flag because the best people normally specialize in just one area and they normally don't speci specialize in so many it's hard to specialize in so many different areas. Okay, when, you, when you're the jack of all trades, that means that you probably just have surface knowledge at best. If you are um, indeed proficient, somewhat proficient in it. But people who specialize in an area, uh, they are the type of people that you actually really want to work with. Because those are the people that if they're sleeping and you call them and you ask them a question in that genre, they can give you the answer off the top of their head while they're sleeping, okay? So it is definitely a red flag um, having all those different um, specialties. But I'm gonna say alleged because I don't believe he got convicted or found guilty as of yet. He's being charged with conning several people. And I believe one person put up their house, which is one of the reasons why I'm reporting this. And then the other reason, one of the other uh, charges was rental fraud. And basically what that is, is that from August to, I'm sorry, April to August, I think it was last year or so, where they wrote a lot of bad checks. So um, because the checks were bad, they bounced and it was never corrected, allegedly, right? Uh, at this particular time, what I've heard is they've taken away his passport. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to, you can go on YouTube and Google it because the uh, pre-trial, if you will, is actually there for you to watch. Uh, and uh, then there are then there are also documents online that you can actually Google. Go to the Fulton Georgia Fulton Magistrate, and you can pull up documents. Uh, when you search for his name. And by the way, that is also a great tool for you if you are going to be doing business in Georgia and you want to just do a little quick and dirty background check on someone. Uh, you can see what charges may have been filed against a particular person um, in, in that particular database okay but yes you can find this information online now i did use a skip tracing tool 
and I did find that Miss Strawberry has filed for bankruptcy twice. I'm not really sure or clear as to why since, um, as mentioned before, she has been in broadcasting for over 40 years. So maybe the people that she has hired has mishandled her money in some ways because a lot of people, when they get to a certain level, a lot of times they don't actually manage their money. They actually normally pay someone else to do it. There are some that, yes, they have mismanagement, managed it, the money uh, themselves. <laughs> but you do have, unfortunately, there are some accountants, as I mentioned in my book, The Pearls of Real Estate Scam Alert, uh, that will steal money from you. And you think they're paying certain people what they're supposed to pay, and they're not. Okay? So, I mean, that is a possibility. Now, the other thing to note is, yes, the rental fraud is not just against her husband. Actually, her name and the company's name, I guess it's the company that the two of them have together, um, all of that is listed. Again, we're not sure if Shirley herself um, was part of the rental fraud or not. Uh, apparently, uh, besides this happening here in Georgia, it has also happened to her in California as well. But here's my thing. Here's where I'm, I'm a little, uh, baffled. Okay. Um, this woman has, I have to admit, I don't really know her. Um, I haven't watched or listened to the Steve Harvey Morning Show in a very, very long time. Okay. But the amount of money that she had accumulated throughout the years, I just feel as though why, why rent when you can own that, that, you know, I can understand a person who is of meager or humble means wanting to rent, but someone at her level, I don't really understand that, especially since, uh, yes, she has that home in California, but she's been in Georgia for a number of years. You, you might as well just own the home, you know, especially after nine, ten years. You might as well just own it. You know what I'm saying? So that's where things are a little bit puzzling to me. Now, what I have heard is uh, she still has the home in California. When I looked it up, she also has another home in California as well. Still has those. Her name is on it. Now, she did on one of the homes put her current husband's name on it, but after these charges and allegations came up, she has removed them, removed his name off of the property. So I want to just pause for a moment and just say to you this. Uh, these properties, uh, just to backtrack a little, she bought the properties in California before she got married. Now, pause, <laughs> okay, to all my women out there and also you men as well, when you get married, you do not have to put your spouse's name on the property. As a matter of fact, I was told not to by several people. I was advised when I first moved to put my mother's name on the property and that that would protect me. Of course, that was the women in the church. They were the ones that said, no, listen, put your mother's name on the house because in case you fall in love and you meet a man, 
you don't want, if you guys break up, for him to come after the house. If her name is on the house, it will make it a little bit more difficult for him to take it away because the house that I own uh, that they're referring to was a multifamily home, right? And the way it was set up was that I would take one unit, my mother would take another unit, and my aunt, in the originally that was the original plan. Things changed um, eventually, uh, but that was what I was advised. And also, later on, when I did meet somebody that I was interested in, my attorney told me not to put his name on the house. He said uh, that in the prenuptial agreement that I can have, I can say whatever was mine, whatever I bought before we got married stays mine even after during and after the marriage so again you guys speak to your own attorneys uh, before adding your spouse's name onto it um, also uh, here's the thing let's say your spouse gets into trouble uh, a lot of times with lawsuits and I'm pretty familiar with them because I just went through one and I'm about to go through another uh, they can sue you not only for your money but they can actually put a lien on your house sometimes when you don't have the money to pay what is owed to the other person they'll put a lien on your home okay so that's another reason why so even though your husband may not have helped you buy the house if his name is on the house they can put a lien on it and since her husband is the one that is in a lot of heat right now he could be facing jail time for the crimes that he has been accused of allegedly then it's it, it was a smart move for her to go ahead and have that removed and the the other thing too i want to say i didn't even know that you could have uh your husband or spouse's name removed after you put it on i thought it had to stay there okay but now i'm realizing you know it goes back to the fact that I, something i always say each state is different. And I know for a fact there are some states that you don't even have to put their name on it. Right? You may want to, uh, for those of you who are interested, I did do a video a few years ago. It's still on YouTube uh, regarding love, marriage, and real estate. Okay? So, uh but I still, even though I did that video, uh, laws change. And being that there are so many different states and so many different laws, it's not easy for me to keep up with that. Plus, me, myself, I am not a lawyer, right? So that's why I encourage you, before you get married, before you tie the knot, put that ring on, the, before you even put the engagement ring on the finger, please consult your attorney so that they can properly advise you as far as what you can do with your property. Okay, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot more into this case, but I really don't want to deal with the other aspects of it because it's really more gossipy and this is a real estate channel uh, so the other charges are not real estate related so that's why I'm not going to go into it too much now uh, the other thing 
that I do want to address is this. A lot of people online who have reported this, they say, they're saying things like, oh, she must have known or she must be privy to what's going on and what he's done because he has had a history. He has been convicted in the past for several other crimes. And it looked like for a while there, he was going on a straight and narrow because he does own a 24-hour barbershop. And so far, that seems to be legit. And he also owns a security firm. That also seems to be legit. But here's what a lot of people forget. A wife is not really supposed to testify against her husband in this country. Okay? So uh, it is possible that she knows more than what she's letting on. Uh, she has written a letter. Uh, it was documented also where, but I think, I think she may have retracted that letter. But anyway, uh, she did write a letter saying that she would like for her husband to come back home. And it sounded as though she believes that he is innocent. Um, I'm not judge or jury, so I cannot tell if she knew. It is possible, to be quite honest with you, for a person not to know everything that their spouse is doing in their business. I personally don't share everything and I know that the person that I'm with, he doesn't share everything either. The reason, one of the major reasons is because we're in two different fields and there are times, um, particularly in the past, where both of us have shared certain things in relation to our fields, but Neither one of us really understood 100%. So because of this, we limit talking about our business. I've also been in previous relationships where the person said that they didn't want me to bring the job home with me. Uh, they did not want to hear about what happened on my job. Right? So... That's why, you know, you can't say, do I believe, I believe she know. I believe she knows something, but I don't believe she knows every single thing. I really don't. I don't, I don't believe she know, knew every single thing that he was doing. And I believe that when everything goes to court, I think she's going to learn a little bit more of what actually happened and what actually went down uh, behind her back, behind closed doors she may not be aware of. I believe uh, being that she's part of the entertainment industry, travel is something that they tend to do. They don't always stay in one place for a very long time. They go from place to place. Um, business, they do more business travel when you're in broadcasting. So for that reason, also, I don't believe that she knows every single thing that her husband did. Since before she married him, there was some issue with the house in California on her part. I believe she knows that. Um, I believe that she's aware of it. Is she totally guilty? Again, she may have had an accountant or a money manager or whoever that may have failed to... Uh, 
handle her money properly, uh, that's also uh, a possibility. You understand? So, like, right now, uh, for the most part, most of the charges, particularly, I believe, surrounding business, is alleged. The other charges, I believe, um, uh, I, I, I don't remember if it's, if it's convicted. I'm trying, I'm trying to use the right words because I do not want to be sued, uh, myself for, you know, misquoting or mis you know, due to a misunderstanding or what have you. So for the, for the most part, I'm going to say alleged. And you know what else to come to mind? It may be best even once someone is convicted of something to still say alleged because I know personally more and this has happened more than once where a person was convicted for a crime that they did not commit you understand so for that for that reason alone I'm gonna lean more and say alleged even if and in this particular case there have been at least 12 people who have stated that they've been ripped off and including Charleston Wright white said that he was ripped off by Shirley Strawberry's husband even though that has come out I still I'm still going to say alleged just to be on the safe side. Okay, guys. So that's my two cents of how I feel about the whole Shirley Strawberry situation. Feel free. Um, if you're listening to me on the podcast, come over to the YouTube channel. I am the Real Estate Regroup Show over there as well. And let us know how you feel. What do you think about this whole situation? And what we can learn from it. Even though it hasn't gone through the courts yet, I still think that, like I said, I myself learned something new. And hopefully, um, maybe you did too. And maybe you want to follow the case uh, just for, you know, your own knowledge and your own benefit, not necessarily the gossip. And then also to my fellow Christians out there, I really believe that we should pray about this whole situation because it's not pretty. The cases and, and, and other incidents that I left out that say that her daughter and her grandchildren were also victims of this particular individual uh, and the other cases that were non-business related but of the sexual nature I really feel as though we need to pray for Shirley Strawberry because um, this really is not a laughing matter and then lastly the other point that I want to bring up is this some uh, many people of course have said well how is it that she's giving relationship advice when her relationship seems to be rocky well here's the thing I did do another video about who are you listening to and this is why you got to be careful who you lend your ear people will say things that will tickle your ear people will speak properly that doesn't mean that they necessarily know what they're talking about you got to look at their past experience uh, you gotta know the in a way you kind of have to know the person um, also, when it comes to re giving relationship advice, I know I'm spearheading off of real estate for a minute, even though real estate is a relationship business, believe it or not. 
here's the thing with relationship advice everybody is different not all are the same and the problem that i see is that so many people feel as though there's it's a cookie cutter solution to solve everyone's problem right that's not how relationships work relationships are not like math math is black and white it's right and exact relationships when you're dealing with people no <laughs> it's not that cookie cutter it's not that clean cut what works for you doesn't work for someone else the people you can get along with and the people you can work with because sometimes you can work with the people who you work with and the people you get along with are not always the same people okay uh, that's number one uh, but that doesn't mean that they'll be a good fit for someone else the person that I sued there are a number of people who love her who she went out of her way to help them with their business but with me she didn't and I know I'm not the only one that she's done this to I know that she's done this to other people there are she's even admitted that there are some people she just can't work with. But unfortunately, she is the type of person that, okay, I can't work with you, but she don't want to give you your money back. Ms. Sade, I do. So yes, that's her name. I put her out there. I sued her. I won. There's no, when it comes to her and like Wendy Lovejoy, you know, and others, that I've sued or that I have experience with. Yes, they're, what they've done is illegal. And I'm going to call a thing a thing with them. When it comes to people that I don't know at all, who I did not go to court with at all, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the word alleged. So anyway, moving forward. Yes, it is possible to. I've, I've seen this with a lot of people. They're good at giving advice to others, but they're not good at taking their own advice. They're blind to what's going on around them, and they are blind to their own relationship. I've seen this, okay? I've witnessed this for many, many years. One particular person does come into mind where she was always in other people's business meanwhile her husband was cheating on her and she i don't believe she knew and everyone else knew but they never said anything to her because they didn't want to hurt her feelings but yes there are many people who uh, a lot of times when you are working in someone else's business when you're looking at other people it distracts you from you looking at yourself and you looking in your own household and you taking care of your own business i even had this situation where someone asked me to be on her board and she wanted me to do a number of things for her and I didn't have time to take care of my own business and grow my own business and take care of the needs that I needed to do for my, for my particular business. So, yeah, it's, there are people out there. It is possible. Again, like I said, I don't listen to her show, so I, I don't know. I can't really say too much about her individually but i do know from experience that these things do happen okay so guys i hope that the information that i just shared with you 
will help you make some smart financial moves because that's all I have for you. <laughs> that's all I have. That's all I wanted to share. Please share this with your friends. Remember, each one, reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.